Welcome to the Real View podcast, where Ohio realtors connect you to innovators and influencers, keeping you with the real view of real estate. Whether you're a broker, agent, first time home buyer, industry leader, or just happen to stumble upon our podcast today, you can expect to hear tips, tools, tricks, interesting information, and so much more from the experts in Ohio's real estate game. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Real View Podcast. I am your host, Allison. Joining me today, we are welcoming back our very special guest. She is no stranger to the show. This is like maybe I want to say the third or fourth. I think that sounds right because we've been having you on like every quarter now. So I think that sounds about right. Anyway, it's been many, many podcasts we've had you on, but I always love having you on as a special guest that I know our listeners do too. So Coach Mary Lou, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Allison. It's a pleasure to be here. And today we are going to be talking about the end of the year, the beginning of a new one. What does it mean? What does New Year's resolutions mean? How can we proceed into this new fresh start, you know, with our best foot forward? And we're going to dive into kind of all of that here today. It is the last episode of the year. So crazy. 2022 just just flew by. Mary Lou, how are you and how has your year been? Oh my gosh, I seriously am having a hard time imagining this is where we are. I don't know where it went. I don't know if this is like becoming an age thing that the older I get, the quicker it gets. I don't know. It has gone so incredibly fast. So fast. Seems like it was summer. It just seems like it was summer. And all of a sudden we're at the very end. Yeah, it's it does really just fly by. And it seems like it goes quicker and quicker every year, which is also crazy. <laughs> um, but but we're here, right? And, and there's so much in the air this time of year about, you know, how we can kind of close out the year strong and, and start the new year strong. And we all kind of have that on our minds. And I think you can feel that kind of energy, the anticipation of something new starting. But also, this is a moment to take a look at the year in itself. How should we approach kind of the end of this year time with so much going on? And I know we were chatting before we started recording and the craziness of this holiday season and everything that goes into it. And it's such a chaotic time of year. How should we approach this time of year? Well, let me ask you a question. I'm going to come back with a question for you. Yeah. How often have you heard, oh, thank God this year is over? A lot. A lot. Yeah. I don't know. They do. Thank God. Thank God it's a new year. Well, it's kind of funny because it's the difference between one day to the next. So I think what's so important here is to make sure that you are entering that next year in that clean way, in that clear way, rather than, oh, 2022 sucked, you know, because that is not going to help you. Imagine that you're dragging a whole bunch of tin cans with you. I mean, they're just going to follow you from one day to the next, one year to the next. They're going to be right there. So taking some steps, and I know we're right there at the very end. It's okay. It's really okay. Don't make this a hard thing, but closing out the year in a couple of ways. One, I think, is to look for things that you really, truly did appreciate about the year because it could have been a real not so great year in a lot of ways. But I guarantee you, there are things that were good within that. And I think that's really important to be able to identify what was good about this year. What did I learn from this year? What did I get from this year? I think that is very helpful. And I'm a big fan of journaling. I think if you can get it down and see it, it's going to have even more impact. Even if you don't, maybe you don't like to journal or you say, I just don't have time. Okay, I get it. That's fine. Identify what those things are, whatever really works for you. So that's one thing. And there are, there's, there is so much. Always. And I know one of my personal, you know, like, because we all get into those states where we're like, everything's not going my way and life is rough and, you know, life isn't fair. And I like to just go through my like camera roll sometimes and see photos. I love it. 
And like, yes. because we don't keep, you know, photos of bad memories on our, at least I know I don't keep bad memories on my phone, but like just doing a random scroll and like see in April, 2022, what you were doing. That's something that I do. And I'm like, okay, no, I'm being dramatic. Like, let's dial it back here. Like, let me find some happy. That is such an easy way for me to like, remember those memories that like we may get lost, you know, the, in that time. <laughs> yes, genius. I love that idea. I, I you may see that in an article somewhere. <laughs> I'll give you full credit, full it's, credit. It's just like seeing pictures of my family or, or out to a girl's dinner, or, you know, stuff that you forget about. You don't remember every single moment in the year. It's so important to do because we do get caught up in like, thank God this year's over. You know, like how many times have we said that, especially with what we went through the past two years with COVID? I mean, I think we all said. Yeah, yeah. Like, shoo. Uh-huh. There is truly nothing magic to take us from December 31st to January 1st. Yeah. It is truly on us. And I know I'm not the only one, but I've experienced a lot of loss this year. That's grieving and I I get that. But the other piece of that is, look who I have in my life. Look at the people in my life and how do I appreciate these people that are here? How do I be more present? How do I let them know that I appreciate them? So. There's always two sides. Yes, you're you're going to have these things happen. That's life. That is life. And to be able to go over here to appreciate what we have at any point in time. Always so important. And I know that's one of the key themes that we always talk about when we have you on is just that gratitude and how important that is. And this is kind of a great transition because I know one of the things that you've suggested too is how we can look about relationships during this time as we think about the people in and out of our lives. The end of the year is kind of a great time to evaluate those. Tell us how we can think about relationships during this time and maybe some things that we can do to address some relationships in our life. The people that we love, we have those people that we love, A, do they know? I mean, I'm sure they know, but are you authentically communicating with them? Are there things that maybe need to be cleaned up that haven't been? Maybe there's some unspoken words. Maybe there had been a disagreement. Maybe there, it it could be countless things. How do you clean up those relationships that are important to you? I've said this to my husband, there are many times where I'm thinking these wonderful things, but they don't seem to make it out of my mouth. They're in my head. So I think, oh, yeah, sure. I'm appreciating that. But they don't necessarily get spoken or to my kids. Same thing. How do we how do we make sure that the relationships that are important to us are intact in a really authentically clean way? And that sometimes is easier said than done. Sometimes takes a little bit of guts, but it is it is definitely important. It's very important. And then there's, you know, that other side, you know, sometimes we're hanging out with people that really are not in alignment <laughs> with our own values or our own. If you are feeling a drain with a certain person, maybe it's time to cut those cords and it doesn't have to be in a bad way. You're just choosing. And I say this all the time, but we are allowed to have preference. What relationships are fulfilling, mutually fulfilling, you know, where it's not a one-sided thing. So I think that's something to really look at as well. It doesn't have to be at the end of the year. But I, when we're talking about cleaning things up, I think that it gives that great opportunity to do it. Yeah, it's a great time to just take a look at everything that we're going to carry over with us, you know, into the new year, whether it comes to our relationships, whether it comes to tasks or things we want to get done. It's it's just the perfect season to do that it is, is happening right now. And I know you wrote so beautifully in the article in the Ohio Realtors magazine that just came out too. So make sure to check your mailboxes if you guys haven't yet. That magazine should have arrived by now and, and take a look at the full article that Mary Lou wrote in there. She gives a really great breakdown of kind of how we can wrap things up and, and enter new year. You kind of mention in the article some tasks that we can do or things that we can put into the forefront during this time that kind of can help us complete the end of the year and really make us feel in a good place, that we've put the bow on the present for, for lack of a better term, and that we can get things done so that we don't have to carry it into the year. 
Tell us a little bit more about that. So I think what you're referring to are more the the true action cleanup item. There's this whole, not an idea, I can't even think of the right word. Anyway, it's when we are tolerating things in our lives that we don't even realize that we are. Maybe there's a light bulb out. Like, you know, maybe you've got all these lights across the top of your bathroom mirror and one little light bulb is out. Those are the kind of things that we just start to get used to. I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some other great examples. And I'm, I'm like the the pile of clothes that you're like, this needs to go to Salvation Army. Like I know yes. like, the, like that yes. stuff that's been sitting in the corner of my guest bedroom. And it's like, this is going to go to Salvation Army one day. And it's just still sitting there. That is a perfect example. I've got actually, as you're saying that I'm looking over and I've got a box to go to half price books. Same thing. The box is holding up the presents that need to be wrapped yet. So. <laughs> Don't move it yet. <laughs> I'm not moving it up. And that it's going to stay put for a minute. But yes, it's those kind of things that we think we're tuning them out, but energetically, we're not. It's registering every time we see it. So what are those things? It might be kind of fun just to walk through your house, walk through your office. What are those things that I have allowed myself to become numb to? And that also can go back to relationships. Great time to go through your closet. I'm pretty good at cleaning out my closet, but there are a few pieces that in my head, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be cool. I mean, yeah, it's going to be okay. It fits, but I don't know. I haven't worn it. You really have to be so not hard with yourself, but really clear. Am I excited about this? Is this something that, truly works with with who I am. I think the problem with some people, including myself, is that different moods dictate different. hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. Different, different looks like it's a boot thing or it's a shoe, you know, you, where you, you really do mix things up. So that can be challenging. But again, be very discriminating with this. Go through this. Let's get this stuff out that you do not need. My office is full of books, full of books. And I've got myself on a regular schedule now. Fresh eyes. This can be a big job. I'm not saying you can't. Chunk it out. Don't try to do everything at one time. Oh, yeah. No, no, you're so right. You know, just even starting with taking just that look, like you said, of everything that's around and just being more aware of what's in our surroundings. And I love that you said, you know, we become numb to it, but still there in the back of our heads. Like I still like maybe glance in the spare bedroom and see the Goodwill clothes sitting there. And But you think you just, it goes away, but look, I'm still thinking of it right now. It's still very much there. And, and what does that take off of our plate when we're able to just kind of get those small things? How does it affect us kind of more than what we may be thinking? I like to think of those kinds of things as a uh, mental clutter. So we have our physical clutter, which could play into mental clutter. It's another should really, isn't it? Oh, I should be taking those clothes or whatever to Salvation Army or Goodwill or wherever you're. And when that happens, think of all of those things that are up there doing that same thing. So it frees up emotional space. It frees up mental space. And physically, you feel lighter. You do. It's it's such a relief And think about just that one example, but like having like four of those examples, like you getting the Salvation Army clothes and the bookstore books, you know, out the door. It's it's like, wow, like this is great. You know, just one last thing. And I just love something about doing it at this time of year. Two, I think is 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 really great. It's just setting yourself out in the new year on the right foot, which I think is just so important. Well, and I think it is for everybody. I mean, we're dealing with this at the end of the year. But then that takes us into the whole idea of New Year's resolutions and fresh start. People really, truly feel that sense of newness when the clock turns midnight and the ball drops. (laughs) (laughs) This episode of The Real View is brought to you by the Ohio Association of Community Colleges. Ohio's network of community colleges provides accessible training that accommodates the busy lifestyles of aspiring real estate professionals at half the price of a traditional university. 
With convenient locations in every part of the state, as well as online options, Ohio's community colleges are your smart choice for pre-licensing education. For more details or to start the journey to a real estate career, visit the education page at ohiorealtors.org and then click on the pre-licensed course locations. So we've wrapped up our year. We, we've gotten those small tasks or lingering things off of our to-do list. And then we're heading into the new year. How should we be approaching the new year? From an emotional sense, from a physical sense, I know there's so much pressure on New Year's resolutions, which I want to talk about here in a minute. But let's just talk about what should our mindset be heading into the new year? I think we will be talking about New Year's resolutions. I think that's exactly where we need to go. Because when people enter that new year, when they're thinking about the new year, oftentimes it is back to the shoulds. I should be doing this. I should be better at this. I sh- There's a lot of shoulds. Years ago, I wrote an article and call- actually called it New Year's Revolution because I never liked how the resolutions worked. So years, many, many years ago now, I taught fitness classes at the Y for like eight years. You could count on every January, this onslaught of people. And then gradually it would decrease, decrease, decrease. So it came to the core group that was the same group that we'd end up with at the end of the year. And I'd watch it happen every single year. So if you think about these resolutions, I'm doing air quotes here. If you think about these resolutions, they're actually agreements that we're making with ourselves. And how often are those agreements kept? And why? Why not? I think they're very well intended. Always. I do. But within no time at all, most people will say, well, yeah, that was great. And then they end up with the same one the next year. It's usually about losing weight, exercising, eating better. Those seem to be the the main ones. I don't know. Can you think of others that seem to be? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, saving money. You're right. Like these big hefty goals. It's so funny that you said that your resolution is just to do last year's resolution. I saw there was a meme on social media the other day <laughs> and it said, my new year's resolution is to finish this year's resolution. And I'm like that. That is like so true in in how I think many of us feel is this like, you're right, they come from such a good place, but they end up never truly working out. And I think that's the good and the bad of these resolutions, right? When we think about what they are. And I love how in the article, you kind of broke down what even the word resolution means and a little bit about how that plays into what you said, you know, the the usage of that word and maybe should we be using a different word to mean something a little bit different. But there is good and bad in the resolutions. The good, I think, is that we come, it, we do come from a good place with them and good intentions, but they don't always work out. How can we stay better on track with these resolutions? Let's go back to the beginning. If you read my blog posts at all, uh, you will have seen often where I focus on wants rather than shoulds and really having that clarity about what it is that you want. There's still that thing that hangs out there about wanting too much. We are meant to desire. There's nothing wrong with desire. When the desire is attached to your values, you're good. You're good to go. Identifying what you want first, then taking yourself to the the next piece of this, which is why. And that to me is probably the most important part of this. Why? Why do you, why? What's important about this? How is it going to impact? Who is it going to impact? How will my life be different? There's all those things that you can be asking yourself to get more clarity about the why. And then the last part of that is how will this happen? What are the actual action steps that need to occur to bring that want into reality? And I think if you can operate from those three things, it's going to be a lot easier. And if you've got them written down and you start to get a little wobbly, Go back and look at the why. Is it still is it still in alignment with your values, your life? Is it still relevant? Maybe it's not. So maybe by April, it just isn't the same. This is where rather than just going, okay, not doing that one, 
you consciously change the agreement with yourself. And that it's okay to do that, right? Like yes, this yes. isn't set in stone. I think we put so much pressure on ourselves that exactly. we don't leave a lot of room for that adjustment. And it's, and we can do that. Absolutely. It's when we don't do it that we seem to get into a, uh, <laughs> where we're not in integrity with ourselves. You think that's just so important to know that it's okay. And that what we've, what we thought in December, you know, might be something that we want to accomplish might not be the reality or whatever it is in April. Like, I think that is so true and that it's okay. <laughs> like you, you, these agreements we have to ourselves are not contracts. Nothing is set in stone. We can be flexible with them, which I think is important. Oh, it's totally important. It really, it's about bringing consciousness to your agreements as opposed to just moving on and forgetting about them. And that becomes more of that mental clutter and emotional clutter. It's not even just mental clutter because when we don't do something that we're saying that we plan to do, then we tend to take that finger, point it at ourselves and make ourselves bad or wrong, consciously or not. Either way, it's impacting. It also kind of goes back to, which we've talked about on this show before with you, is the importance of being present, right? And just and just making that a part of what we're doing when it comes to these resolutions, when it comes to a new year, no matter what happens, it comes back to being present. We can adjust these, these agreements with ourselves. We can adjust these New Year's resolutions if we are in the moment, in present, in the present, and really evaluating and, and taking a look at ourselves. There's some other ways to play with that. That's a way. And I like that way. It's good. It works. But what if you were to create a theme for yourself for the year? That's fun. I love a good theme. <laughs> so that's yeah. very fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. It could be fun. It could be fun. It could be it could be anything you want it to be. It could be completions. Maybe you could get into this whole idea of wow, this is starting to feel pretty good, but I'm not done. Maybe that becomes then the theme. So that's another way of doing this. So I was trying to think of some ways other than the norm that we could play with. Another way that I've done in the past, so I know you and I have talked about my meditation and I've been in classes for years, years, years looking at, and one of the things that they have us do is create three qualities that we want to focus on. That's kind of fun. That is fun. Different. It's just a different way to approach it. And it makes it seem not so this monumental thing. If we're focusing on just three qualities, you know, we really want to put in the forefront of this year. It seems much more digestible. (laughs) It does. And that's something I use then within my meditation. So this year, 2022, my three were connection, freedom, and joy. Those were my three. They will not be that this upcoming year. And that's okay. You know, it's like, what are those things that you are most drawn to? So that's coming at it from a place of values or whatever words you want to use. Then let's see, you can look at this from a creating some daily habits. That's another way to play with this. I say, if you're going to go in that direction to keep it no more than 10, But things that you want to start doing on a daily basis that you're currently not doing. That's another way to just break it down into that micro level, right? That's just so easy. It's like, okay, you know, I want to wake up five minutes early and and do a five minute meditation before the start of every day. Yeah. It's such easy. It's not like I'm going to lose 30 pounds this year. It's so much easier to digest and you're just putting yourself in such a better position to succeed, you know, and sometimes these lofty goals that we put on ourselves. I'm trying to give some different ways to go about the new year without it being just that rote, okay, New Year's resolutions, let's write them down or not even write them down, (laughs) have them hanging out there. You can just kind of create some main things. I keep saying last year. It's not last year yet. (laughs) (laughs) Almost. (laughs) I had two main things that I wanted to get complete. One was for us to get all of our estate stuff done. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say we put it off and put it off and put it off. Got it done. Done. It was done early in the year too. Done. The other thing was to complete my book that I'm working on. Not done. And that's okay. I am working on it. I have an editor that I'm working with. 
and I'm doing it in chunks. So, and so that that's where the agreement gets changed. So it's not like bad Mary Lou. It's okay. It's coming. We're working on it. Yeah. And to know that there's still progress being made, you know, and and just the fact that you didn't get something done that maybe you thought doesn't mean that it's a failure, right? It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's still something that you're working on and you're taking the steps to achieve that goal every day. So that's more of a goal. That's different, again, than these New Year's resolutions, as people call them. So there's a lot of options here to play with as you're getting into the new year. Either way, that why has to be there. Any of these things that we talked about, there needs to be why. Why am I doing this? If you do not know why you're doing this, trust me, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, and it's probably maybe not as important to you or in your life as you may think. If there's not that reasoning behind it, it might not be that critical to your life. Or you can be, sometimes we absorb things from our family, our family of origin. Maybe this is what the way it's always been done kind of thing. And so we just kind of carry on without really connecting into why it's important for us. So true. Always remember that why. Never, never let that go. I want to know kind of merrily before we wrap things up here, what advice do you have for us kind of heading into the new year? You gave such fantastic tips and ideas into how we can approach this new year with our best intentions and our best foot forward. But what's your advice for us heading into 2023 and maybe, you know, some final closing words on on wrapping up 2022? Just to be completely honest and clear with yourself about what's important for you. It reminds me of the airplane, the oxygen mask. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. To really make sure you are taking care of your needs and taking care of yourself. And from that position, then you are much more available to others. But it's got to start with you. It absolutely has to. And having that self awareness is critical. And no better time than now to do it. We got the time. We're, we're heading into this newness, this new period, and great time to check in with yourself and just, as you said, make sure you're all good from a you side. So absolutely. Well, Mary Lou, what an amazing year. Thank you for, for being a part of it. <laughs> you're welcome. I love it. I, we have so much fun with you when we do this. We do. I, I love it too. And I know all of our listeners do too. I know you always get such crazy numbers when these episodes come out. So you are very, very beloved with all of our audience here at Ohio Realtors. We appreciate everything and happy new year. And I hope your new year with you and your family is everything that you hope it to be. Oh, thanks, Allison. You too. You too. Happy Thank New Year. You. Yes. Happy New Year. And to all of our listeners, Happy New Year to you all as well. We will talk to you in 2023. Everyone have a safe and happy holiday. Thank you for listening to The Real View. That wraps up today's episode. You can keep up with the latest on the podcast at ohiorealtors.org slash The Real View and on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Have questions, comments, or suggestions? We want to hear from you. Email us at podcast at ohiorealtors.org. We'll see you next time.